I have another power supply video for you guys. And I think I should make a power supplies playlist, because we have seen homemade supplies videos on this channel, I've made some reviews on these small digital supplies and also this portable power supply from eDesign, and today I have yet another power supply video. There is a new low cost digital power supply on the market, and a lot of other electronics youtubers are talking about it. And that is the Raiden RD6006W DC power supply. This is only 64 euros, and it has a lot of cool features. And 64 euros is low cost compared with other brands of the same type of digital controller supply. But of course that is just for the digital controller. We would also need a supply and a case for this. And that's what we will see in this video. I will make a short review of the specification of this new power supply. We will see what we need to mount everything and get a decent bench power supply for our workshop. And then we'll make some tests. If you think my videos are helping you, consider supporting my work on Patreon. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. So let's get started. This episode is sponsored by the PCB manufacturer company GLC PCB. Their main services are the 2 layer PCBs for only $2. Also 4 and 6 layer PCBs. The SMT assembly process where you will get the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place and also the SMT stencil for soldering SMT components with solder paste. The quality of the PCBs is amazing. I use their services all the time and always get good results. For only $2 you have 5 PCBs of any color that you want. So go to glcpcb.com, upload the Gerber files of your design and order the PCBs in just a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. So this is the rd 6006 w power supply. Well this is just the power controller, not the actual supply. You receive the main unit, the temperature probe and the Wi-Fi module in case that you order the Wi-Fi model. Let's just start with a quick spec list and the main features. And then we will go and mount the supply and test it. For the voltage this controller could have an input from 6 to 70 volts and an output from 0 to 60 volts. As for the current it could deliver a maximum output of 6 amps or a total maximum power of 360 watts which is quite decent. But of course these are maximum ratings and you will also need a powerful supply to power this controller and achieve these maximum specs. The supply that I will use is 360 watts and if you use a lower supply to power this you won't reach the maximum ratings. Anyway what more do we have? Well we have a color OLED display of 50 by 40 millimeters where you can see the voltage, the current, the power and a lot more and we will see that later. On the side we have the digital control with numbers. We can store predefined values, we can enable or disable the output with this button here and we also have a rotated knob for control. Some buttons will have an LED behind so we can know when they are active or deactivated. As for the output terminals, here we have the main positive and negative terminals, but also an extra terminal for the battery charging. We will also see that later, see how to charge the batteries with this output. Ok so we can control the supply with buttons, but also with a USB connection from a PC application or using directly a Wi-Fi connection to our smartphone. I think this is very interesting. You could install an app and then control the supply, see the real time logs, make screen captures, set the limits and so on. You can make graphs and much more directly from your smartphone or your PC. If you are making tests this will definitely help you to create graphs for your results, save the test values for research and more. On the back the driving MOSFETs have a heat dissipator and a cooling fan on top. The output is enabled with a relay, which is this one here. And on the main PCB we can see at least two fuses of 10 amps for protection. I can also see a cell battery socket, maybe for saving the configuration, real time clock and so on. On the output we have three huge capacitors of 330 microfarads, which seems a bit too high and that means with low value loads the voltage will drop very slow, we will see that later. We can also see the pins for a Wi-Fi module and the connector for the temperature probe. The board is based on an ARM microcontroller, the STM32, which is quite powerful. Ok guys, so let's see what we need to make this work, but also to give it a good look. Later we'll make some quick tests, 
connect it to our smartphone, see how to use the battery charge feature, change the power on logo, update the firmware and so on, so stay tuned. Ok, so when you buy this supply, you will see that you receive just the controller. And that was the same for this other supply driver I have here. So you will need to add an external power supply for this controller, which in this case I was using a laptop supply of 32 volts. But now for this bigger supply, I want to use it at its maximum capabilities. So for that I've also ordered a 16 volts power supply of 6 amps. This will add around 27 more euros to the final cost. But if you have an old supply from a 3D printer, an old PC or maybe a supply that you don't use anymore, you can also use that and save some money. But make sure that the output is above 6 volts and you can get a decent amount of current out of it so it could be useful. The supply I've selected also has a cooling fan and it can support a 220 volts or 150 volts AC input and you can select that with this switch. With these two parts we could already make the power supply work but we need a case to fit everything inside. So for that you could build your own case, maybe 3D print one or make it out of acrylic or protected plywood. But in my case to get a very nice final look and since I've already invested in a good supply, I went and bought this case kit from Banggood as well. This will add 35 euros more to the final price. This kit is fully compatible with the RD6006. Actually it's made exactly for this power controller. The kit will give you a metal case with insulation coating paint, the AC input plug, an off and off switch, a temperature controller and driver for a cooling fan, the cooling fan and rubber feet with screws. The input plug also have a safety fuse. Check the schematic below in order to see how to connect everything, but this is quite simple. The main input will be connected to the plug. This plug is connected to the switch, to neutral and to earth of the supply and the switch is connected to the live terminal. Then we connect positive and negative 60 volts to the power controller PCB, here on this input terminal. Make sure you don't connect it backwards. Connect the fan and the driver as in the schematic. So first I take out the screws of the metal case so we could open it and easily mount everything inside. As you can see, on the bottom part, in the middle, we have some holes so we could screw in place the power supply. But first we have to add the AC plug, the switch and the cooling fan. For the switch just push it inside and the plug will need 2 screws. We need 4 more screws for the cooling fan and that's it. Then we can screw in place the supply on the bottom side of the case. Now make the wire connections between the switch, the input plug and the supply. Also screw in place the temperature monitor and connect the fan to this module. Now take the positive and the negative output wires and connect those to the power driver panel. If you have the model with the Wi-Fi control, remember to also plug the Wi-Fi module on the back of the controller. You will see the SPA pins on the back. And also remember to connect the temperature probe on these pins here. So now we can close the case and give it some tests. The front panel can be pushed inside and it will stay there. Ok, now flip the case and add the final rubber feet and that's it. Now I connect 220 volts to the input plug and power it on with the switch. Ok, so now I press the on button on front and there you go, the supply works. But before we make some tests, let's see how to control it. This is quite easy. To set the voltage just press the VSET button and then you have to type the voltage using the numbers. For example I type 3.3 and then I press enter. Now the voltage is set to 3.3 volts. Now I type 5 and then enter and the voltage is now 5 volts, so you get how this works. The same goes for the current value. This time I press the I set button and then I type the current value and have in mind that the maximum current is 6 amps. So for example I type 0.2 and then enter and the current is set to 200 milliamps. You can also use the knob to set these values. So press the V set or the I set buttons and then use the knob to increase or decrease the values, but it is a lot faster using the buttons. Now as you can see on each button we can memorize a value. We can save different values for each memory. For example I set the voltage to 5 volts and the current limit to 1 amp. Now press the MEM button and select on which memory you want to save it, from M1 to M9. I select M1 and press enter. I do the same for the voltage of 3.3 volts and the current limit of 0.5 amps 
and save it on MEM2. In order to switch between memories, just press Shift and then select the mode, in this case M1. Press Enter and the predefined memory will be set, and as you can see once again, we have 5V and 1A. To lock the buttons or enter the menu, just press Shift and then the lock or menu buttons. I now press Shift and menu and we enter that menu. Use the left and right arrow to change between screens. Then press Enter to enter the menu on each screen. Use the up and down arrow to navigate the list. You can use the knob to change the value of the selected configuration in the menu. You can select the language, turn off the beeper and select the interface for USB or Wi-Fi, so we will see those later. On the next screen you can change the display mode from numbers for voltage, current and power to a plot display, where you can see in real time the graph of voltage and current, so this is sort of an oscilloscope but much slower. Ok, so on the final menu page you can see all the memory for the preset values. And finally, to enable or disable the output, just press the on-off button and it will go green when the output is enabled or be turned off when the output is disabled. Now let's see how to control this using the Wi-Fi connection. For that you will need the Wi-Fi module connected on the back of the controller board. You will need an Android smartphone and an internet router. You need the router because the connection is not made directly between the smartphone and the Wi-Fi module. Both the supply and the smartphone will connect to the same LAN server made with the router. Ok, so go to the Play Store and search for the RD Power app. So install this app. Now connect your smartphone to the Wi-Fi connection from your router. Now enter the supply menu and change the interface from USB to Wi-Fi. Save and close the menu. And now you must reboot the supply for the configuration to take effect. But before you power back the supply, you have to go to the smartphone app and enter the network distribution. Now power up the supply and wait for the IP address to appear. When the IP appears on the display, press next on the smartphone and then click the confirm button. Wait for the connection to establish and you will get the ok message on the display. And then the supply will reboot itself. Once the connection is established, go back to the app and press the connect button and you will be connected to the power supply and be able to control the settings from the app. As you can see we have the scope view for the voltage, the current and power and the input voltage. Then we can enable or disable the output from here. You can also press the voltage or the current V set or I set and then use the knob to adjust the values. Once the value is selected, press the set button and the output will be changed. You can also press the call out button and select one of the predefined modes we have seen before. At the same time you will be able to see the temperature of the system, the battery in case that you are charging a battery and the milliamps hour capacity that was charged. That is quite cool, right? You can do the same with the USB connection and the software installed on your PC. So go below and download the software and install that on your PC. Now connect the USB cable from your PC to the power supply. Then enter the menu and change back the connection mode from Wi-Fi to USB. On the PC software select the COM and press connect. So now you can control the supply from here, make screen captures or graphs and so on. You could even change the power on logo or update the firmware. For that you have to enter the firmware update and install the newest version, if you don't have the last one. Or you could enter the change logo button and here you can upload your own photo and this must be 320 by 240 pixels. Select the photo and press upload. The power supply will show the uploading process on the display. And as you can see I now have the latest version and my own photo on the boot screen. So this is quite cool. Ok, so that's it for the control, now let's make some tests. First thing I've seen on the user manual is that it has a 1V dropdown, so with a maximum of 60V input, the maximum output could be only 59V. As you can see if I set it to 60V output, it won't work. But if I put 59V it works with no problems. And second is that the output capacity is quite big. For that we have to connect the oscilloscope at the output, and as you can see I now change the output from 59V to 5V. And without a load to empty the capacitors, the voltage will drop very slow. This is not a big problem, but you should have this in mind. And when we have a load connected, this will be a lot faster. 
Ok, now let's see the ramp up curve. I enable the output and let's see. Without a load, it will rise up from 0 to 50 volts in around 27 milliseconds. And then we can also see a small under voltage, and then this is the PID control loop taking action. And then we have a very stable output. Now I add some resistors as a load of 15 ohms, and I do the same. Now the ramp is a bit slower, and it will rise up to 50 volts in around 35 milliseconds. Now we have no more under voltage or over voltage. Now let's do a reverse ramp. So under load, I decrease the voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts. And as you can see, the output is discharging, and then we have a stable 5 volts. Now let's see the voltage and the current values. I don't have a very high precision multimeter, but I think this will be just fine. We are looking at a 2 digit precision. So one is connected in parallel so we can see the voltage, and the other one will be connected in series, so we can measure the current flow. I set the power supply to 12 volts without a load. And there you go. I have the same voltage on the multimeter. It seems that on the OLED display of the supply, the voltage is slowly ramping up. But actually, in real life, as we have seen before, it's just a couple of milliseconds. So I try multiple values and always get the same value on the multimeter as on the power supply. But now let's add a 15 ohms load. Now we have the voltage and the current values. And as you can see, the current value on the multimeter is the same as on the power supply. There is a small error of 1 of 2 milliamps. I've measured the input and the output power for a fixed voltage and load, and by that we can get the efficiency. I don't have a load controller, so I can't get the full efficiency on the entire range. But luckily, they from EV blog already done that and got pretty much these results. For some reason, there was a drop in the efficiency at 5 amps. Maybe the supply changed the switching mode or something like that. But in overall, the efficiency is always above 95%, and that's quite good. Ok, now here we have the ripple with no load, and as you can see, at a division of 5 mV, we almost have no ripple. But now I add a load, and we can see the switching ripple. As you can see, the peak to peak value is around 25 mV, and an AC RMS value of 1.6 mV, which I think is more than good for a switch power supply this cheap. Using the cursors, I found that the switching frequency is around 72 kHz. So that's it for the tests. Now for the last part, we have the battery charging terminal. This is kind of the same as the normal positive terminal, but it has 3 extra controls. It detects the battery polarity, automatically enables or disables the charging process, and shows the total capacity that was charged to the battery. So first, when you connect the battery to the charging terminal, the battery icon will go red, if the battery is properly connected. So now we are good to go. If you connect it backwards, the battery icon won't go ready, and the power supply won't be able to turn on the output. To charge the battery, you must set manually the constant voltage and current. For example, 4.2 volts and 500 milliamps. Then connect the battery and check if the battery icon is red. Now press the on-off button and the battery will charge up. If you disconnect the battery, the process will be stopped, and you have to manually turn it on again. Also, when the cutoff voltage is reached, the process will stop automatically. So guys, that's it for this very short review of this cheap power supply. Ridden is always getting better and better, from those cheap and low power supplies, to this higher power and better control lab bench power supply. For only 62 euros, this product totally worth the money. The total price for the driver, the supply and the case for me was 67 euros for the Wi-Fi model, 35 euros for the 360 watt supply and 28 more euros for the case, with a total of 131 euros for the full kit. Links for the products are below. So I hope that you like this video and if so, subscribe to my channel and give a like to this video. If my work is helping you, consider supporting my videos on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.